everyone and welcome to the NKV Day podcast, episode two. Last time we talked about monarchy, something about the Occupy, and we also got around to Iran. Um, today uh, we're going to try and get to some more sort of topics. First we're going to start off with the pepper spray thing, if any of you have seen that, and uh, the Libyan civil war ending, we stepped and possibly that American debt. So... We are joined by, today, Soviet Empire, USSR. Hello. Sindri Pals and SPQR. Don't call me by my real name. I'm sorry. Go You'll find me and kill me. Yeah, me too, man. Just Hello. Me too. And uh, uh, joining us, um, sort of new, is Jack Evans. Hello, mate. Actually, my introduction was completely smooth yet. Yeah, assholes. <laughs> what? I said boot, bro, bro. Hi. You know, hi. We're talking at the time. It's not my fault. But yeah. Well, was... you should start. Don't introduce someone when, like, I- I'm not done introducing myself. Or I haven't even started introducing myself. I'm like, asshole. That's very unprofessional. Boot, bro, bro. Get a bit ahead of yourself. Cinder is busy. Get on with it. Okay, yeah, so we're going to start off by talking about the pepper spray incident, if any of you heard of it. Does anyone like to start off with basically describing what it is? Um, (coughs) Soviet. (coughs) I suppose (laughs) I'll start off with this. Basically a bunch of, um, if you haven't seen it before, um, a university in California was uh, having a a, uh, sit-in. They kind of had their guys... uh, sitting in um, to do a protest against uh, rising tuition fees, right? You know, something typical that happens, I I see it all the time at my university, but the problem here is that there, for some reason, there's a large police presence, even though they weren't really doing anything, they're just sitting down on the ground. All of a sudden, um, a police officer with a large canister of heavy-duty pepper spray kind of goes up to the crowd that's kind of lined like up, point, start, uh, instantly points it to their faces and starts spraying, like, in a line. And just one by one, they just, like, everyone's, um, everyone is uh, visibly in complete agony, and suddenly all the police officers swarms and starts beating them and takes them away. There's, like, uh, kind of an extension of most of the typical one-minute video. There's, like, an eight-minute video of shit them all, like, going away, and then you can see that they're all in complete agony. And also another thing is that you can kind of see the cops uh, kind of um, saying, oh, you're resisting the arrest, you're resisting the arrest, and they're just kind of like squirming around like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in massive pain. So, yeah, it's kind of uh, it, um, my mic's a little bit, sort your mic at, what? Are you guys able to hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, so it's okay. worked out anyway, we'll, we'll try and continue this. I'll, I'll see if I can add him back in. But yeah, anyone else like to take up on the topic? Basically, it's awful. It was, it was shitty. It, it sucked. Essentially. So it's basically what happened in uh, Oakland, you know, where they kind of tear gas everyone away, just on, you well, know, uh, a mild scale. Have, well, no, this is, point, this is just point blank. Like, if, have you ever seen the video? I've, I've seen it. Yes, yeah, I saw the video. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen, yeah. and I laughed my ass off. Well, it, it gives you a boner every time I see it. <laughs> I, I still think Oakland was, like, even less justified, because, like, the whole thing was, your sleeping bags are dirty. It's a public menace. <laughs> this is not actually what they said, because, I mean, in England, we've had, like, no coverage of, like, this event. I basically, all I've heard is, like, Oakland was really bad, and I've only seen bits of Wall Street. It's like, I, I, what, why, what, what, I haven't seen much of it, what's been sort of going on in Oakland. Uh, who, me? Yeah, yeah, well, have you, have you seen more of it? Because, honestly, I, I've hardly seen any of it. Uh, well, well, please, please. I haven't really please seen that topic. much either. Uh, Trust me, like, in the news, I mean, I kind of just stopped watching it, because, for one thing, oh, it, just, it just irritates the crap out of me these days, because... Usually, it's they're just so overly negative. I'm like, I'm not watching this. When I do watch it, I just go like on the internet and figure it out. Usually from you guys. So that plus, I'm usually lazy. Ah uh, right. So I'm just, so I've just, I've just got an Occupy Oakland video here. But it's, at the end of the day, 
it seems it seems that basically the Occupy movements in America are getting larger and larger by the day, and they're happening sort of everywhere. And it seems that the police, it's sort of showing up that the police aren't really trained for this. It's like the police don't really know what to do, and it's just, they seem to be just taking the anger out for the fact that, like, I don't know, is the police cuts there, Jack, in America? Is there a lot of police cuts at all? Um, yeah, there's, I, um, I kind of agree with what you're uh, saying, is that there's definitely a large lack of discipline in the uh, police. Um, they're kind of at, frankly, they're out of control. And I... I mean, if you can, if you be, oh, oh, Soviet's bad. But if you compare, yeah. like, if you see some of what's happening in, like, Oakland and, like, then compare it to basically the London riots, the police in the London riots would seemed very, I mean, they weren't really in control of the situation, but they seemed very professional at times. They were following orders, like, to the letter, and they weren't using excessive force at all. They were using a bit too little force. It seems well, just. Yeah, you know so. what? Excessive, like, that kind of, using, you know, that kind of pepper spray is necessary when they're at, when you're in a situation where you got a, a large-scale riot, like the like the uh, G20 Toronto riots or the Vancouver riots or, like, the London riots, where people are just absolutely out of control. Um, that's when, you, you know, I agree that you should use um, pepper spray to kind of get these guys to calm, calm the fuck down. But, um, you know, this is, more, this is, this is a lot people, more peaceful. Yeah, these are just like I see, I see, I see these protests all the time at my university. There's not a cop in sight, and nothing goes wrong, right? At the end of the day, like okay, you got your like you know, um, I'm a student. I kind of I I highly sympathize with them because I mean, going to university is a huge financial burden for most for most regular families. So I, I sympathize with them. Like they got to get the tuition fees got to go down. And fortunately, in Ontario, they um um. The government, I'm kind of promoting my government because I, I'm like that, but in Ontario, the uh, liberal government uh, uh, is lowering tuition, or is that about to uh, give, give, uh, give us back uh, $1,800 a year um, for, uni- for our university fees, so that's about 30, 30% of uh, the costs uh, reduced, so that's kind of a huge thing. That's something that governments uh, should do, and instead they're kind of... Um, they're kind of ignoring. They're kind of ignoring students who are kind of being uh, continuously going in debt, uh, and no, also it's kind of it's kind of part. It's, I see it as part of the. Sorry, can I? Um, I just. You, you just I just want to finish like uh, last quick point, and then I'll let you guys uh, yap away for a bit. But it's kind of what I see as is a part of a larger problem of a massive gap that's starting to emerge between the rich and the poor. You can kind of see it statistically. Um, the middle class is largely disappearing, and it's kind of actually being evenly split between the upper class and the lower class. It's actually kind of surprisingly evenly split, but still, it's kind of showing a massive gap that's emerging in society. So I'm going to shut up for the next ten minutes, and you guys continue talking away. Right, this is slightly off topic, but how much are tuition fees in like in like where you live? Um, I had to pay about six thousand Canadian dollars. Um, but now they're, but now they're going to go down, uh, by 30%, so I'm probably going to pay, like, $4,800, uh, next year. Seriously, we, we had, we, um, like, my, um, my parents saved up enough to send me to university on the old rates, which were three grand a year. Now, it's 9,000 a year pounds. Holy fuck. Oh, I know, they, no, it's because of the they, conservative they, government, but do they, basically, do they rate? I can, we can, hard, I can afford, like, one year. The most. They, they raise it by that. Like, like raise it. Yeah. Are you yeah, fucking, because we've got an extreme Tory government in. They just. They are just, you well, we get paid for going to university. What? what really? We get paid for going to university. You get okay. paid to go to uh, university. Uh, are you? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm. Oh, I'm, I want to go to Denmark. I okay, guys. I don't know if you guys need help, but my mind's fucking blown. I, On one I, end, I've got been someone who is. Who's being he has to pay like nine thousand pounds? So I'm gonna assume it's double. Uh, your money's worth double it. So like I'm gonna assume it's eighteen hundred dollars a year. That's like that is that's ridiculous. So eighteen thousand dollars a year it would be if it was double. That's ridiculous. Oh, like, ridiculous. You know, 
Okay, um, you know how much it would cost for, uh, uh, every, yeah, if every single Canadian paid uh, $42 a year, we can provide free schooling for everybody, university for everybody. Oh my, see, we should do that, I mean, it's just... $42, nothing. Just, just another thing, Brad, just, I know this, we've really gone off topic, but the Tory government, they, they basically, they've given private management over an NHS hospital, which is an outrage, and they want to close um, an accident and emergency sort of like is e- the emergency room if it's like America. Okay, that's, that is just I mean, It's horrible. I don't know, I hate, I hate the Tories in uh, Canada as well, they're kind of... And that like, is how left-wing this podcast is. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> well, no, I'm, 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 more, I'm more in the liberal crowd, kind of the centrist crowd, but yeah, we're pretty, I can just, I can just say that there's no one on the right. Let's get Karakaran in here. Oh yeah, uh, this is, this is, this is like a little bit too liberal bias. But, but yeah, it, I'm going to say this is kind of like liberal to socialist bias, bias. but just, I say like, speaking like socialist, socialist. Hold on, Jack, you might have in a bit. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Just a Mine's little bit. But, um, basically, if, if you added Comrade Lur in here, uh, we'd basically be the most communist group like, on the forums. I'm not communist. I'm, uh, I'm a... Well, let's, let's, let's go for the, let's go for the prize, guys. Well, you're still, we're still more left-wing, sort of. It's going to be big. Anyway, back to the pepper spray incident. Do you have anything to say, Soviet? Finish your back. He's running. Soviet's drunk. Yeah, so we got something to drink, and I was drunk, so I don't know exactly what's happened. So, but uh, so I'll, I'll guess I'll throw a word in. Um, I think it's just way too brutal that the uh, Canadian government decides, oh, sorry, the American American government decides to do that. They're acting pretty brutally upon every, any protest right now. I think actually they're acting a lot like the Soviet Union did uh, in its late defeats, defeatish days. It's like kind of there's like a protest. The G20 sort of protests in England where basically a police I mean, like, officer hit this guy with his with his, with his truncheon and the guy died of a heart attack. But there was well, also a report that basically uh, police officers were swapping serial numbers. So if they said, well, um, we accuse this person, your serial number, of doing this, they'd say, no, but I, I was over there. See, they, they, my, I was over there with them, so they must have got the wrong number or something. It's not me. I think the, yeah, the, the, um, there's there's kind of a problem with the uh, lack of they call it I, I think they call it kind of the uh, blue wall like the police are will um, they're out of control in some yeah, situations. I, I think they, uh, I think they actually thing need I, to put some more strict regulation when it comes to the police. So it's just you don't need to go through an education, but you also need to go through. Yeah. Some kind of test to make sure you don't suffer from some mental instability. Yeah, see, we have a really res- we have a really restrictive sort of police um, service in our country. Like in America, they will attempt to pit maneuver a car to the side of the road, right? So where they like <laughs> budge to the side, not spin around. In England, you need four police cars. Um, a chopper, and have had to sign seven health and safety forms to attempt to pull a car, pull a car over, and basically you box it in. It's yeah, like, and in Russia, in the American and cars they cost like six. This cost like like two to six thousand. Like their cars, they're not like. I mean, they're good cars, but at the end of the day, they're not like amazingly built. And it's like twenty eight thousand for a British police car. And if you mess that up, you've got to pay for it. Oh God, Berger, remember the, the Russian police chase? Oh God, what? the one where like <laughs> just like uh, the guy was like speeding, and then the Russian cops like unlo- uh, unlo- used so much ammo on like this, this one car, and the, the guy doesn't even stop, man. That guy's got balls. They start unloading like <laughs> they <laughs> unload so all their ammunition they had. They had to call in a second car uh, just because they had more ammunition. Have you have you ever seen? Uh, uh, was it basically? Um, I mean, some of the stuff they do is stupid. Like I saw, I saw this video. This Ameri- this guy got out of his car. He ran to a fence. Like he was running to try and jump over a fence. This like sheriff's office, like police car, ran, came and trapped him between the fence with the car. Got his legs stuck there. 
but it, it's yep. just, but then I've seen other, other things where they do like really well. This guy was driving like a four ton truck around, high fiving people because he was protesting about a mayor getting out of her office. And the police tried to stop him, but he wouldn't stop over. And basically, they pulled this like armed SWAT truck over. Um, he, 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 he got this armed SWAT truck in, and the truck got stuck on a little curb. And this, um, this like SWAT armed police officer, he did a full sprint with his M4 carbine and shot the guy out of a moving truck. Have you got anything to add, just um, Jack? What just before we end? This sort of topic. Uh, I'll do what? Have you, have you got anything just to just to sum sum up at all for for this topic? For the, the Dude, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, my mic is just going ape crap on me right now. I it's hard for me to hear anything. Okay. Um. Let's move on to somebody else. Okay. Right. Um. So what? Um, the second. Uh, subject was it was it was the end of war in Libya, wasn't it? If I'm right. Yes, this was subject. This was suggested by Soviet, and he's drunk off somewhere. Yeah. I think he went to the market or something. <laughs> Maybe. Would anyone, anyone like to start off on the um, end of war in Libya slash sort of Gaddafi's sons getting captured and him dead? I'd like to start. Uh, I think this isn't going to work out well. The Middle East has had nearly no experience in any touch with democracy for, like, forever. Uh, of course, democracy comes from the people's heart this time. It isn't something we uh, forced upon them, but I have a good idea that it's not going to work out like the West democracy, like Western democracy, since they haven't touched our form of democracy with a 20-foot pole, like, ever. It's kind of like, it, you probably get, like, as soon as you get democracy, you'll get something like what happened in, like, Weimar Germany, where basically you've got, you, as soon as they're allowed to express their opinions, you have get so many parties trying to spring up that nobody gets really any votes at all, and it's just messed up. Yeah, but Germany had some uh, experience with democracy due to, due to the fact that, you know, pretty much all their neighbours were... Uh, more or less democratic nations like uh, France or the Belgium or the Netherlands or Yeah, Britain. but then you still end up with Hitler and extremist parties on the left and the Well, that's because they were in an extremist Poland was the dictatorship. Really? Um, yeah. Um, Berger, Berger, it was a dictatorship. And, and, then you, and then you talk. Wait, was Holland a dictatorship during the uh, 30s? No, no, no. Poland's. Poland. Oh, Poland. Was Poland? Oh, yeah. No, Poland, Poland was a dictatorship. Really existed. Yeah, it was a dictatorship. Yeah, but they annexed they? Poland because, you know, they listened to Wagner and all that. Most of Eastern European countries were dictatorships, uh, except for Czechoslovakia. Or is it sort of like, sort of kind of like Britain, where it's like king in charge, but then you have a parliament who don't really do anything? Like sort of uh, I don't know. Minutes. I just know that it was a dictatorship. I think that's... Like, well, was, it, was it a constitutional monarchy, or is it like a real dictatorship? Yeah, like... Uh, I think it was just like a regular dictator... Uh. But, um, yeah, so but it wasn't like it wasn't like super. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know the details. It's known as like a dictatorship. Uh, oh well. So what um, does everyone think about the death of Gaddafi? Uh, I'm pretty um, sad he's dead. Um, I'm, I'm glad the okay. bastard's dead. I'm kind of glad he's dead, but I just think it'd have been interesting if he did go to trial because you'd get. Like witnesses, you probably uncover the fact that Tony Blair and George Bush did a lot of backroom deals with him. Really? Would surprise me, but I'm, I'm just sad that he's dead. I'd rather have him in prison, like, uh, rather than have him shot. But uh, that's just me. Well, I, I personally kind of wish he wasn't dead, because personally, I'm not sure what's going to come after him. Because, I mean, look at Egypt. For like When they got rid of uh, Gaddafi, they just got the same situation over again, and they're back, you know, protesting. So, I mean, I, I kind of wish it would have stayed the way it was. Because, I mean, I'd much rather prefer that stable, you know, idiot of a dictator than that, you know, than the uncertainty of what's going to happen next. I mean, somebody could get installed. Somebody could, you know really threatening, more, much more worse than Qaddafi could get in power, you never know. Yeah. Can I just, just 
take them to say some of the, the, just referring to the pepper spray thing. Is it me, or is like the American police getting more and more like what they are on GTA? Uh, like use of excessive force, anyway. I'm sad. <clears throat> Once again, I wished he. Uh, no, I'm not Shay. Please, I'm not Shay for girl. I'm not that weird, but um, I, I'd I'll rather say. have. Yeah, she was pretty severe, but I'm not going to go on that. I'd rather have him, you know, um, go in an election just to see how popular he was. I'd like to know that. Of course, there was a popular uprising against him, but um, I'd still like to... His followers were dead at the time. Yeah, that's pretty sad. I'd, I'd rather have him, you know, on a trial for his war crimes, where we get presented evidence that he did these war crimes, and, uh, and just let, you know, let him go down in history as a dictator who went to jail. Exactly, yeah, but well, wouldn't have gone to jail. Basically, uh, they, I was just I was just referring to something. Uh, earlier today, uh, I was listening to Radio 4, which is sort of like, it's it's the more newsy sort of, um, the sort of mature radio station in Britain. But basically, uh, they, they basically, I don't know who he was, but they had this very posh sort of lord person on there. And he, he basically, he was on about Gaddafi's son getting caught, and he, and he said that, um, really, I don't know what's in store for Gaddafi's son. Because of um, Colonel Gaddafi, there is no justice system in, um, um, there's no justice system in Tripoli. Basically, what will probably end up happening is they'll have to make their own constitutional very quickly, and anyway, they'll probably um, instigate a death penalty like what happened with Saddam Hussein, except they won't hang him from sort of gallows, they'll hang him off a lamp. And that's what this guy said on an informative news radio programme, that they'll hang, it, um, hang Gaddafi's son off a pole. Any comments? I'm just glad that uh, his son is uh, going to go on trial, but I hope it's like under like the international uh, the eyes of the international community, though. That's like one thing. Go ahead, Bergro. I was done. I no? have nothing. That squeaky chair has to speak. Yeah, it's a squeaky chair wants to speak. <laughs> I, st- I still want to know what happens when the where is the chair is squeaking. What, 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 what is going on in the background when the square chair is squeaking? Everything. I think he's falling hamsters. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there, there must be like purple elephants just flying by. Anyway, squeaky chair is gone. 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 There's no distance between God and squeaky chair. It's the Skynet chair. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, Skynet. Does anyone anyway, so, so uh, we move on um, from Colonel Gaddafi then? Yeah, we got. Like, I think this is gonna last like 20 minutes more, but I don't think Libyan or Libyan Middle Eastern Libyan democracy Libyan. in general will work out very well. Either, either it will collapse, or, and they'll get a new dictator, or it'll be very different from Western democracy, and we will maintain the same kind of relationship. I think you'll just get too extreme. Yeah, same. So, yeah, the next topic is um, Greece's debt. If anyone would like to open with, the, with that, Greece's debt. Out with Greece. <laughs> Out with Greece. <laughs> is that what you think? What? Is that what you think? Greece should not be in the um, EU. Greece is still in the EU. Don't you think it shouldn't be? I'm just saying, is that what you meant by Out with Greece? Yes. Alright, okay, just, just checking out what you meant. I, I, I mean, the only, thing that's pr- pr- the only thing that's pretty much keeping them in is uh, German and French interests. I don't think German and French, while German and France are still the two major players in the EU, they should not have, you know, they, uh, you know, the, we, the EU relies on Britain and, uh, sorry, Germany and France and Britain for that sake, but. If they don't kick any old ones for Germany, France, and Italy, but Italy's gone down the spout as well. Yes, and Mussolini. I'm sorry, Berlusconi went off. Um, I keep refuse. I keep confusing too because they look alike a lot. When you look on the, never mind. Um, I think the only reason that Greece is actually still in the eurozone is because. Um, well, it, it damaged the the euro more for them to get them rid of them. I don't see, yes, it's true, but it's only because, uh, 
someone fix the uh, uh you know the way it's gone. Way it's only gone. it'll only damage the EU more because France, Germany, and the Great Britain has interest and stocks in Greece pretty much. If they pull out everything they have of Greece, then kick them out. I don't see any consequence. Except Greece will become a shithole, but it's already in. At the end of the day, if you, if you, if basically, Greece has added to good. They get the same salary in pensions as they do when they're working. Yes, and they also get 14 month of, months of pay in a year. Exactly, and, and as well, um, what is, it, is, it, is it like the only seven doctors in the capital city claim that they earn more than 2,000, and a dentist claims that they earn less than £175 a year. Wait, what's £175 a year? Yeah, that means so they're not eligible to pay tax. That's, they, they basically see tax as a voluntary contribution. I mean, that's what you need to learn. I, thought, I hope Greece is a message to the rest of Europe that, no, don't bullshit us. Don't bullshit when you join the EU or else this shit's going to happen. Yeah, they just, it's kind of like we hid the debt a bit, like what Italy did, just hid the debt. Yeah, at least I, I don't think Italy, like, I think Italy will probably spiral down as bad as Greece because I was in Italy uh, like uh, less than a month back and it was pretty terrible. Like, I, I, no, yeah, I, I they've saw... Got a, they've got a new technocratic leader. What? It's, uh, it's, it's said on BBC News their new leader is a technocrat. That is his new leader is a technocrat. Well, I don't think science is going to fix this one up. Oh, no, like I don't know even if that's what they meant by it. It's like if they meant something else by it, but it's a technocrat, and I was like, really? Okay. I, I still think it's going to go bad, because I seriously... I, the only money I ever used, in the, or the only money my family used when we were in Italy, was pretty much for the hotel and restaurant. Hotel and restaurant. Nothing else. Not buses. Not trains. Not taxis. Why? Because they didn't give us. They didn't give a shit. I, we didn't pay for any tickets when we went on buses because no one would take, get us on doing it, and we weren't the only ones. Out of 60 people I saw on a bus, only three did it. Only three bought tickets, and that's pretty terrible. The, the, Italy's debt or Italy's crisis doesn't come from Italy itself. It comes from Italy's people because they're fucking retarded and don't want to buy tickets and don't have the will to actually recover. I mean, Greece have had it too good. I mean, it must have cost them a fortune with all the plates. Yeah, it was, it's worse for Iceland, but don't mind that. Right. Should we move on from that topic? Uh, We've still got like 15 minutes left, so we can... Uh, just we'll stop. Well, there's one more topic. It's the American debt crisis. Ooh. Tax the rich. Yeah, uh, that is probably yeah. what they should do. Tax the rich more. Yep, tax I mean, the rich. People, tax big people, business. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. I mean, when people, when like I saw that guy, John Boner or whatever his name was, uh, Jack, Jack Boehner, Jack. I, I don't remember his name, but he was a Republican. I, I just called him John Boehner. Yeah, John Boner, and we'll call him that for now. He basically said that if you tax the rich, you destroy business, but that doesn't quite make sense since taxes on the rich were at 90% during the uh, greatest period Seven of American years. history. Yeah. So, you know, I don't see the correlation between the two. And if, we put, if they put taxes on the rich up to 90% again, that would pretty much fix everything for them within, like, less than in like 20 years or 15 years that if they take all the money from that and put it into the um, debt they can solve it pretty quickly also they should cut military spending yeah they really should because I mean like their national guard is just bad and they're not even very good no offense like Americans uh, enthusiasts but the American army is that brilliant they haven't even defended the US from a legitimate enemy for over 60 years I mean come on well, technically, they haven't really, since the Civil War, they haven't really had an engagement on American soil. Yeah, the word well, there Harvard was. Well. Yep, yeah, for Harvard. But that's hardly American soil. Well, the Americans you know, did, um, sent a bunch of drunk Irishmen after us. Oh, yeah, they did, they did do that. The Fenian raids. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
but just I think that they should just completely abolish the freaking military. I, I don't see the actual use of it. I mean, obviously, it's to deter people from attacking them, but they get nukes. Like, well, I wouldn't I mean, attack them, actually. First I think of all, who's going to attack them? Just went really paranoid. I mean, first of all, if America just started to seem like it was really paranoid, people would be like, okay, okay, don't, don't do anything you don't want to. And they're like, what? We're not paranoid. And then it's just like, they should just pretend that they're like really paranoid to like other nations. And then they'll be like, okay, we'll give you free money, America. Just don't nuke us. Don't, don't nuke us with those thousands of nukes. No, nah, the Soviet Union did that. I don't think that's going to work out in the way. And well, I mean, of course, everyone hates America, except the Americans. But I don't think they should <laughs> deteriorate their uh, relationship with any other nations anymore. Yeah. Like it's it, it's at minus two hundred for everyone, pretty much. I I think I really know three, two or three people who actually likes the U.S. out of the thirty people or so in my class, and those are and those people are like. Uh, hardcore libertarian Ron Paul fans, so that only makes sense that we, they make up 10% of the class. Really, I thought, what I think they should do is basically more rights for everyone, really, because, I mean, they pretend they've got this amazing constitution when they really don't. I say more rights for, more rights for everyone, so they're, like, so they're better off people. And then well, um, I'm probably, yeah, everyone I'm probably is definitely more taxes. Oh, oh, Ameri- Ameri- system. Americans have Americans more rights than pretty much any people in the world. They have the best of everything in the world. Well, it's the problem is no one can afford it. Look, they have like the best healthcare in the world and everything, but no, no one can afford it. Actually, yeah, yeah we, no, they we don't. Do not. Canadians, we it's do the not. Canadians or the Cubans. Fifty million people don't have healthcare in that country. I know, I know, but they have the best healthcare services in the world. It's the problem is no one can afford them. They cost billions upon millions. Well, technically, then that isn't a good healthcare system. Then, seems it isn't a good healthcare system, but it's a good, it's good healthcare. It's the best health service. But no one has access to it. Well, technically, the NHS yes. is the best yes. service. If it, if it ran like it's supposed to, was supposed to, NHS would be really, really Well, what's the, what's the point of having a, uh, having the best health care system if no one can afford it? Exactly. Or people exactly. go into debt to get just so they can... One of the better health care systems. Uh, maybe, I don't know. We have, we have our... It, it's got it's not perfect, but it's pretty good overall. I've no, I don't have any kind complaints like the, with it. Kind of like the NHS then, because we're not perfect, but everyone likes it. Except the Tories Denmark, I, I and think posh people, because posh people can afford other things. Because I think private healthcare in this country is actually quite cheap. I, I think insurance is think, quite good as well, I've got to say. But I think Denmark has the best healthcare. I think Denmark has the best healthcare in the world, statistically. I think it's like 95% satisfaction or something. I need, I, I, I need to ask a question. I think we can test it like this. Has any of your other countries, like, experienced mass outrage because lots of old people died in one of the hospitals? Jack had a question. Oh, Jack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, oh, no, I want to know what the healthcare system is like in, like, Greenland. <laughs> like, oh, it's, what? Uh, it's non-existent. What? Like, do they still yes. rely on black magic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're still still over. No, they actually don't. Greenland has, uh, I think, Greenland is pretty much uh, under Danish control in pretty much everything. We ch- we have pretty much the same of everything, but I think Greenland has its own foreign minister, and that's about it, as far as I understand. Everything else we control because we are imperialist masters of all Greenlandish people. Uh, so we've we've kind of come to the end of this podcast a little bit, haven't we? we I mean, we can uh, we can discuss off-topic things if anyone has a question. We have like ten minutes left. Yeah, yeah, but we can discuss off-topic things. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share with us? Yes, I fucking hate Sweden, just as every other Scandinavian do. Uh, but I, I don't think most people like Sweden. I mean, everyone has legitimate claims to Sweden. Look, we have a Finn on the forum, Death Trap. He hates Sweden. We have a Norwegian person on the forum called Pineapple Joe. He hates Sweden. And, uh, and we have a Danish guy on the forum, Warburg. He hates Sweden. You're and then I'm a Slanic. Well, I'm a Slanic Danish, pretty much both. And I hate also, Sweden. So everybody. It'll go away eventually. 
So everyone in so pretty much Sweden, everyone in Scandinavia hates you. Go fuck yourself, and we'll annex you one day. Thank you, Sweden. Go away. Yeah, I, I think this podcast will really piss off Kara Kara Can. I mean, I don't think, it, I th- I don't think a lot of like sort of frag women will like it, but then they're not well, a target audience. Kara Can's yeah. answer to everything is give more power to the rich. Get more what? Privatization. Yeah. Yes, Where's Todd? Where is Todd been? I don't know. He went. He kind of lagged out at the start, and then he hasn't. He was like, "I'm gonna go get a drink, guys. I'm here, guys." And then he left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, we need to get we need to get more people on the um podcast. podcast. Well, people with different different views. That's what I want to say. Yes, we have a lot of left wingers. I don't know where Jack is. He's probably like. Hardcore call me uh, or something. Yeah, if anyone wants to join the podcast, just send him, right, add either me or Sindri, or send a message to the channel with your Skype details and we'll add you. And you can come on uh, next. Also, you, if you're French, you can we, come in. Only we, if you're yeah, French. We want, yeah, we yeah, want not we, we, we want not. We want a not. We want a not. At least yeah, one. You've got to have one. We want Ron Paul, Sarah Palin. And who else? Well, Alabama well, Lennon in this call right now. Oh, uh, yeah, we want Ron Paul, want Ron Paul, want Ron Paul and Sarah Palin, and oh god, what was the third one? Oh god, I forgot. Alabama Lennon. Uh, EPA. Oh, the EPA. <laughs> yeah. EPA. No, I don't mind them that much. It's just they seemed a bit strict. Oh no. John. No, no, what about Peter? Peter. 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 Oh, you, you don't get it, gay. Gay, gay, gay doesn't get it. I don't get it now. Really? Oh my god. It's the um, Rick Perry thing. He couldn't he couldn't remember the third ministry he wanted to get rid of, so he's like, oh my god. Oh, wait, uh, what? Third one. what was it? Like He wanted to get rid of the Department of Education and, like, what was it, welfare? And he didn't ever say the third one, did he? No, uh, someone asked him if uh, he couldn't remember the third one, so I think it was Ron Paul who said uh, the EPA. Yes, yes, the EPA, yes, the EPA. Yeah, I'll just say the EPA. Uh, it was Glenn, I'm pretty sure it was Glenn Beck. He's, I'm pretty sure it was him. It isn't Glenn Beck. Oh, don't think he was there. Glenn Beck died in the car accident. Glenn Beck, the Texan who wants to protect an independence, yet is running for American presidency. Pretty I'm pretty sure Lynn Black is just going to die from learning about the next great conspiracy theory. Great Scott! Ah! Commies! Damn it. Yeah, commies are everywhere. Commie Nazis. How yeah. the hell does that work? How can you have a commie Nazi? I love you, Steve. You don't get it, Dave. You won't get it. It's a McBain thing. I am under attack by commie Nazis. I will deliver these gun supplies to small African children. Never mind. Also, there's also, I don't know, what does Glenn Beck fear, here's the question, what does Glenn Beck fear the most, liberals or commies? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I'm going to go with B. Commies? Mm, commies. Yeah, B. I do, think we should, be. do you think we should, I'm just wondering, do you think we should, like, next time in the podcast, like, um, we should try and do sort of philosophy and then sort of his, history? Or should we stay politics? We can, we can pretty much go off topic, but we need more people. Like, I got a character on Skype and I tried adding him three times in the call, but he doesn't take it because he's like, because he's too busy sucking the dick of the rich. So, uh, I think Sylvie has a national socialist friend. Who would like oh, to is that, was that, um, um, that was Caleb. Caleb hasn't been online recently, has he? Oh, Caleb hasn't been online recently, but he hasn't, doesn't have a mic because he's too busy sucking the, uh, you know, white people's. He needs, like, a musical note right now, like, <laughs> like a retarded 80s song or something. Yes, pretty much. I have not provided anything for this podcast, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's pretty much been three of us. You've been here. You've been. That's what you've done. Supported Jack, what's your what's your name on the forum? Just so people know who you are. Uh, Soviet Strelzy. Everyone calls it Soviet Strelky for some reason. Oh, that's who you are. Yeah. 
Which one did you eat last? I'm the guy anyway, with the hand hand picture. But yeah, uh, we'll probably end the podcast here, eh, guys? Yeah, uh, right. please fix, uh, Gabriel, please try to fix the right ear rate. I know, I don't know what happened. Yeah, with that. I swear, if I can only hear myself on my right ear, I am going to personally <laughs> murder someone on behalf of all the people who complain to me that they can only hear me on one ear, so. Yeah, and then everyone, and then I noticed I could hear me in the other ear. Yeah, you know what? Make sure. I don't know what it is with the audio, but make sure we can. If, if there's an option to just like have like mono audio where it's just like the same on both ears, do it. If it, if this is like some kind of issue with like the stereo thing, if it's like because I don't know, if it's not, if it's trying to do some sort of stereo, I'm not an expert on audio, but it's yeah, trying to do some sort yeah, of weird I've stereo audio thing. Movie maker, so yeah. Well, I'm right, pretty sure but, you can uh, even do that on Windows Movie Maker. I'll see if I can. Anyway, so um, um, I'll just say um, that's goodbye from me. Goodbye from Sindri. Sindri. And everyone say goodbye no, to Todd. Don't call me by my real call. First, ask the QR. I I demand that you send it out every time you say my name because I don't want people coming to my house and killing me. I'm one Hello. of the six people in this country with that name. Someone's gonna track me down sooner or later. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm called Gabriel, so that's like easy to track down. Yeah, I'm Gabriel B G B off of forums, and I end my topics with regards. To anyway, everyone, let's say goodbye together. Three, two, one. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.